I'm driving the Skoda Enyaq Coupe RS. This is the best looking car on the MEB platform yet. Better looking than the ID4, ID5, Audi Q4 e-tron. I prefer the design language of Skoda. They have a really clear DNA in the brand and you really recognize the details, some design details from Skoda in general. And I like that. This is the sportiest version. 299 horsepower, 460 newton meters of torque. It does zero to 100 in 6.5 seconds and has a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour. Welcome to its own electric. It's time to review the Skoda Enyaq Coupe RS. It's equipped with the illuminated grille. It's mamba green, so really popping and sporty color. 21 inch wheels, staggered setup, 235 at the front, 255 at the back. And the reason for that is that the big motor is at the back, so 204 horsepower at the back and 95 horsepower at the front. So it's really rear wheel drive biased. The Coupe RS is equipped with a long range battery. So 82 kilowatt hours of gross capacity and 77 kilowatt hours of net capacity. NMC battery pack, so we only charge it to 80 or 90% usually. A VLTP range of 520 kilometers. So it's fairly efficient given its battery size. I guess that's because of its real wheel bias and it can turn off the front motor when not needed. So on highways, the front motor actually shuts down if you don't drive it on traction mode. So that will save you a lot of energy. So this is a family hauler with a small pinch or small touch of sportiness. I mean, the 299 horsepower isn't enough to create a performance car out of a car that weighs 2.3 tons. It's almost 4.7 meters long. So let's look at the driving dynamics, suspension, the DCC system, dynamic chassis control from the Volkswagen Group. That's the adaptive suspension system which adapts to the driving conditions. You have more sportier settings and can also adjust it down to a comfortable level. So let's start by pressing the mode button here, a hardware button. You have different drive modes, echo, comfort, normal, sport, traction. And traction is to give the car a permanent four wheel drive system. So when it's slippery outside, for instance, during heavy rain or snow, you activate the traction mode and it will continue driving even on highways with the four wheel drive system. And then you can set the individual modes. The individual modes as usual means that you can set all the settings manually and choose the settings that uh, fits your driving style. You can slide and manually set the DCC setting so all the way to the left, that's the more comfortable and soft mode. If you move it to the right, you will get a more sporty and firm ride and less body roll. Uh, and there is a difference. I can say the difference is not huge, but you can feel the comfort when driving on highways and you feel that all the way to the left, it's a bit softer, passing over bumps, uneven surfaces and it's also a nice setting for normal highway driving. The more inspiring setting though is to put it into sports mode. It will get a bit more harsh and gives you a touch of a sportier feel. But I must say that even at the sportiest mode, it doesn't feel that hard. Even if it has the 21 inch wheels, it's still fairly comfortable. And, and the feeling in the different dry modes, for instance, comparing echo with sport that's you, you really feel the difference when it comes to the acceleration the echo mode acceleration is a lot less compared to the sport mode it's actually a really big difference it feels like in echo mode it doesn't use the front motor at all and doesn't push all the power at the same time to, to the rear motor so you really feel a big difference in acceleration between Echo and Sport. I mean, Comfort is also snappy uh, as the Sport mode feels almost the same, normal too, but uh, Echo is clearly the slowest driving mode here. So let's have a quick look at the recuperation settings. The main setting for the recuperation uh, is by switching 
the dry mode selector and you have two modes D or B and B is the setting that gives you the permanent recuperation setting so it's always recuperating gaining some energy back when you let go of the accelerator so that's the closest you get to a one pedal driving it is almost like a one pedal driving it does come to a semi full stop as you see it still rolls five kilometers per hour so it doesn't stop completely but it's still fairly strong because you have the two motors going on and braking for you the other mode is the d mode and d mode usually uses the outer recuperation meaning that it adjusts the recuperation depending on the situation for me it seems to like it almost never uses recuperation uh, or very a very small amount of recuperation in this mode what you can do though for instance now when i let go it's a slope downwards then i can add recuperation for this specific moment and scenario but it will turn back to auto when I start pressing the accelerator again. So now that manual setting I just did is wiped out and back to auto. And my feeling is that it's a fairly silent car. The noise, the cabin noise is not high. It's a well insulated soundproofed car. The suspension, despite its 21 inch wheels, never feels too harsh never feels too sporty all in all a very comfortable and a very family oriented car let's try the suspension on some gravel uneven surfaces and potholes and see how it behaves so suspension set to fully comfort now entering the gravel road this is the road i always test all my cars on to see and to be able to compare them but in comfort it really feels nice to drive on this road the gravel doesn't make any strange noise inside the wheel arches so they also seems to be well insulated doesn't disturb you at all and as always i mean volkswagen normally do great suspension and especially their DCC systems seems to be good all over the line. Let's try some potholes. Yeah, no issues. No strange sound from the suspension. So let's switch it to sport and see if we can feel any difference. Stiffens up a little bit. Let's try to hit the same potholes on the way back. Uh, it's a bit stiffer bit bumpier but still it's still not a hard suspension so even at the sportiest mode it's uh, fairly soft let's check some of the practical aspects of the skoda anya coupe rs powered lift gate 570 liters of boot capacity a lot of storage underneath here for organizing cables storage on the sides so you can even fit cables there and a specific bag for that foldable seats split into 30 and 70 with a ski latch in the middle you fold the seats by pulling this lever here and you have another level for the left side in this case this car has a tow hitch but that's extra you just pull the lever here to extract the tow hitch there you go so as a summary plenty of boot space foldable seats tow hitch you have all you need so all this together creates a attractive package for families with kids and as usual when it comes to cars built on the mab platform there is no frunk so no space underneath the hood skoda is a clever company so before we jump in and look at the interior i want to show you some hidden everyday functions that's good to know about umbrellas inside the front doors sunshades built in to the rear doors ice scraper hidden into the boot lid backup camera washer when it comes to the back seat it's not 
huge amount of room here. Let's start with the headroom this time. I'll take the cap off. It's really a limited amount of headroom. Now I'm sitting very straight and my head is touching this interior lining. If I sit more relaxed, I don't touch it, but it's still a limited amount of headroom here. When it comes to the knee room, my feet fit under the seat, which is good. My knees are touching the front seat. Uh, and I just want to let you know that I'm tall. I'm 193 centimeters tall or six foot three. And the front seat is adjusted after my driving position. So it's maybe not the most usual case. Seat heating and climate control for the back seat and manually adjustable air vents, two USB-C ports and kind of a storage bin which can be removed behind the two seats. So if you travel three people in the back seat, you remove this one to create some extra leg room. Otherwise, traveling two, you have this to, I don't know, maybe store some cables or some other stuff. In the middle, you have the armrest with two cup holders and a ski latch, as I mentioned earlier. As usual in, on the MAB platform, the Volkswagen Group seems to save money on the materials, especially in the back seat. You see it on the doors because it's hard plastic almost everywhere you touch. The only soft spot is actually where you rest your arms and it's a very limited amount of padding inside that one. So not the most premium feeling in the back seat. The seats themselves are comfortable and this uh, lime green stitching and lining follows even to the back seat. So that gives uh, a nice feeling to the interior and you have this panoramic glass roof go that goes all the way to the back also gives some extra freshness to the cabin. So let's check the front seat. This is the sports seats with lime green contrast stitching, Alcantara feel, perforated seats. They give you a bit of a harsh feeling driving long trips. For me, it's a bit too hard. I know this is the way the German brands normally do their sports seats, but this is not that kind of a sporty car. So, so a bit more soft cushioning, soft padding would have been a better choice. I like that they play with the lime green colors and the same Alcantara feel the material goes on top of the dashboard. And there's a multi-layer dashboard, three different la layers. We have some carbon fiber look layer at the bottom with a chrome that hides the ambient lighting. On top of that, the Alcantara looks. Small air vents, a big screen, 13 inch screen. This is really a lift if you have tried the 10 inch screen in the ID3, for instance. So this is perfectly fine when it comes to the size. The Coupe RS and this car comes with a techno package, so it includes a head-up display, a really fine working head-up display with augmented reality when navigating and also as a assistant showing you the lanes, etc. On top of the 13-inch media screen, center screen, there is a small 5-inch screen for the instrument cluster just shows you the most necessary information and if you're used to the MEB platform cars this one works the same shows approximately the same functions the animations the graphics is a bit different uh, otherwise it works fine it's a bit small uh, on the Volkswagen cars it's placed on top of the column of the steering wheel so it gets a bit closer so now the screen feels a lot smaller than it does on the ID series, for instance. So a couple of inches bigger screen would have made perfect sense for this car and this layout. And the rest of the materials on the door sides, semi-soft touch on the top, carbon fiber inlay here, ambient lighting underneath, stainless steel handle for opening the door. Good feeling on that one. The handle for closing the door is hard plastic and not that sturdy. Plastic covers for the Compton uh, speakers 
and padded armrest but as in the back seat the padding is not that much so it's a bit hard they should have gone for a bit more padded armrests the mid console is also multi-layer so you have storage underneath uh, with two pockets and on top a chi charger two usb-c ports further away in two cup holders small cup holders you can adjust it but uh, i think that doesn't make sense because they are way too small for bigger cups and not adaptive extra storage here for instance for keeping your phone coins two coin holders this is a handbrake and the gear selector so the knob for the gear selector is really small but doesn't need to be bigger than that so let's continue looking at the central console hardware buttons real buttons acts as shortcuts for the screen so for instance if you press this one you can set the tire pressure and the anti anti spin system you have the mode selector or at least you can't select the modes from here but you can activate mode selector on the screen and then manually select the mode here parking assist this car is equipped with park assist so it's a shortcut for activating that climate settings to the right and this activates defrosting functionality on the rear window and the defrosting during winter time for the cabin so a good amount of shortcuts and functions to to make it a bit easier for you as a driver to to activate the most necessary functions good implementation so let's have a quick look at some functions on the main screen here and as you saw now air gestures is possible so you can swipe by doing this i don't know i never use this function but it's possible to use anyway so if you go back to the home screen i think this looks a little bit better at least than it does in my id3 and uh, as you see here you have a navigation view you can press that to get a uh, full screen navigation so that's good vehicle information with some data consumption information long term since start since charge you reset it by pressing the 0.0, .0 button there you have a banner at the bottom control banner for controlling the climate and a couple of shortcuts for the home screen you can create some favorites and to the main menu and the main menu is where they hide all the functionality so for instance the different assistant systems is to be found here and here you have them spread out around the car like uh, sign recognition speed warnings etc and as you see i think the system works fairly good it is not slow as i have experienced in other cars feels uh, quick enough the 13 inch screen the biggest screen in this car really lifts the system and helps to show the system in a better way charging settings for instance here you can adjust the maximum amount of charge by sliding this you have some extra settings here for bi-directional charging you can have activate a better car mode that always charges to maximum 80 percent always unlocking the ac cable for instance when the charge is ready and you have reached your uh, charging percentage then it unlocks the cable so we can just unplug it without bringing a key that's a convenient feature you also have this uh, location setting so you can store up to five locations and set specific rules for that location for instance a charging schedule if you only want to charge during night as you see if you're used to the meb platform and their systems this one looks the same as the volkswagen cars there is a bit of a different theme but uh, otherwise the same functionality <laughs> not a system to brag about but i have haven't had any issues uh, with um, with this system currently so it seems to work good i have the car for one week and no issues at all so it's time for me to summarize my week with the skoda enyaq coupe rs mamba green color <laughs> not my choice of color i would not choose this color i would go for red or something more settled maybe the blue color 
uh, suited this car well too, because I like the contrast between the black details and the green color, but I really don't like the green color. It's not for me. But otherwise, don't see this as a RS car. I mean, 299 horsepower, that's not enough for a 2.2 ton heavy car to call it an RS. I mean, zero to 106.5 seconds, it's good. It's not bad. It's snappy enough for a family. Uh, and you need to understand the purpose of this car. I mean, it's a practical car with decent boot capacity, decent cabin room, tow hitch capability, ski latch. So it, for me, it's more of a car for a family with kids, active family that does a lot of sports, maybe goes skiing, etc., and likes the more sporty look of the car, the coupe shape, really makes the car look a bit better, look a bit more exciting than a traditional SUV like the Enyaq. I like the look of the Enyaq, the traditional, the normal Enyaq, but this one looks a bit more sporty. Uh, that's where this ends. It's a sporty looking car with a pinch of a sportiness. I think that's a good summary. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay electric, Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.